Are autoimmune conditions irreversible? And just because you have an autoimmune condition, does that mean it's going to be impossible for you to lose weight? Stay tuned for today's episode. Welcome back, my friends. My name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today, I have an interview with Adrian, who is the owner and inventor of Morosco Forge, a cold plunge company. So yes, we are going to be talking about cold therapy. Now, while Adrian did use some diet interventions, which we're going to talk about in this episode, she attributes reversing three autoimmune conditions as well as losing 50 pounds to cold therapy, to ice bathing. And so I wanted to get her entire story and just talk to her about how she accomplished this because ice bathing is not something that people, especially women, I think, are rushing to do. Now, I have been actually doing ice bathing for the last six weeks very consistently. And I have to be honest with you guys, I'm pretty hooked on it right now. The mental health benefits are amazing. The sleep is amazing. The metabolic benefits are absolutely amazing. So I've experienced a lot of wonderful things, but those three things may not be enough to motivate you to try it out. I hope that Adrian's story is. So I hope that you guys enjoy this conversation. We go deep into all kinds of things. There is a part where I did make her blush a little bit because of some of the results I've been having. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's not too personal. And I want to thank the sponsors of today's episode. The first one is going to be Optimal Carnivore. You guys know I'm a huge fan of their beef liver supplement and their grass-fed organ complex supplement. You can use my code carnivore uppercase Y to save over on Amazon 10% on these supplements. We take them and they are amazing to keep your immune system running robustly throughout the winter especially if you're not a big fan of eating the organ meats. So check out Optimal Carnivore. Again, my discount code carnivore uppercase Y to save over on Amazon. The second sponsor of today's show is going to be Upgraded Formulas. Another supplement that I cannot live without is my magnesium from Upgraded Formulas. My code over there is Yogi12 to save on anything over on their website. I love their hair tissue mineral analysis because a lot of us struggle with mineral imbalance. If you've got any kind of headache or fatigue, sleep issues, muscle weakness, any of that stuff, it could be a mineral imbalance. Typically a headache is the first indication that there's a mineral imbalance occurring. So their hair tissue mineral analysis with a consultation is a fabulous way to get to the bottom of that and then find out smart supplementing, what you actually need to add in order to correct these imbalances. So check that out. Use my code YOGI12 to save on the magnesium, the hair tissue mineral analysis with a consultation, anything over on their website. And I hope you guys enjoy this episode with Adrian. Leave us a comment, a like, all the things, and I hope you enjoy it. I'll talk with you guys again soon. Bye. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming back and tuning into today's episode. I am very excited about today's guest. Adrian has healed three autoimmune conditions and lost what I believe is 50 pounds doing ice bathing. And, you know, this is a topic I think a lot of women are pretty terrified of. So that's why I want to bring her here because she's kind of the boss. <laughs> so Adrian, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, let's dive right into your story and, you know, how you got interested in doing ice baths in the first place. Well, I'd like to start by saying I was never interested (laughs) and I'm still not most of the time. I'm still a heat focused person, which Mm -hmm. by the way, if you hear some whining in the background, I've got a new Rottweiler puppy and we're working on kettle training. So just bear with me there. I had a Um, Rottweiler and the, literally that was the best dog I ever owned in my life. I mean, the sweetest thing. So so cute. We're getting there. (laughs) It's hard. It's Uh, hard. So (laughs) at about 32 years old, I got sick. I got really sick and it led to a year long, um, 
kind of discovery of what exactly what was going on in my body. First diagnosis I received was Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So I had Hashimoto's autoimmune. Within the second year, I was diagnosed with two additional autoimmune conditions, one of them being urticaria, where my outside of my body just turns into a big hive to anything I'm allergic to, and eosinophilic esophagitis, where allergies would present in the esophagus as hives. So it caused a lot of distress. And within that first year, I gained 50 pounds. So it was almost like to the day in a year, I gained 50 pounds and I've always been a slender person, very small frame. I'd always been healthy. Wouldn't say treated my body the best in my late teens or in my twenties, but I'd not had any major, you know, illnesses or anything like that. So the challenge was that no matter what specialist I saw, no matter what I did, nothing took care of the symptoms of my illness. I was prescribed at one point, 20 plus vitamins, supplements, and prescription medication pills per day, and two live antibody shots per month from my allergist. And while going through all of this, my body was not getting stronger. It was getting weaker. So I was more tired. I was in more pain. I was having more gastric distress. And about two years into my illness, I started eating a low inflammation food regimen. I don't like to call these things diets. I don't believe in that word. I say that we all adopt our own food regimen. And I followed the walls protocol by Dr. Terry walls because she did it for MS and it was inflammation focused. And I thought, well, what better place to start than inflammation? I knew I was inflamed. And although that would provide a little bit of extra energy, although that taught me how to properly feed my body for fuel and for medicine, it didn't solve my problems. It did not cure me. It didn't heal me. And it did not get rid of the symptoms I was experiencing. So about four years into my journey um, of illness and I mean, you name it, depression, anxiety, chronic pain, inflammation. I was losing relationships left and right. It was costing me the ability just to even work some days. So it just wasn't getting any better. And I was at my wits end. So this is about four years ago, November. So November, 2017 was when I took my very first ice bath. And my husband is the one that introduced me to it. And he's like, Hey, I've heard of this thing. We were reading some books at the time that also talked about the benefits of cold therapy for healing and for inflammatory purposes. So like Nassim Taleb's anti-fragile. Um, and so he's like, I'm just going to set it up. I'm going to set up in the backyard. If you want to join, you can join because you guys, I'm a Florida girl. I grew up in the sunshine. I moved to Hawaii because I couldn't fathom being anywhere. It would be cold in the winter. Phoenix summers are still my favorite time of year. So four years into this practice, I'm still heat focused. I love the heat. It's not even that cold today. And I'm bundled up in a sweater just because I want to be. So when he discussed this to me as being an option for healing, I thought he was mad. I thought he was out of his mind. And at the same time, I was at my wits end. I would have tried just about anything at that point if I thought it might give me some relief. So we set it all up here. We did some breath work beforehand and I hovered over the ice bath. So I put one hand on each side of the tub. I put one foot up on each side of the tub. I dropped myself in. I held my breath. Turns out that was about nine seconds. I jumped out. I freaked out. And then the empowerment set in, like, first of all, I just did that. It wasn't even about how long it was. It was like, I did that. And I survived like somehow I took an ice bath and I'm alive to tell the tale. And then as the excitement starts to tamper a little bit, my breath starts to come back. I realized that for the first time in years, I did not have the chronic leg pain that had plagued me throughout this entire illness, like so bad sometimes that it was hard to push a gas pedal on my car. Mm -hmm. So I had relief of chronic pain for the first time in years. And I cannot begin to explain the joy 
that that brings when you've been fighting every single day for years and it's just a slow downhill slide to all of a sudden feel empowerment and lack of pain and exhilaration. And even though my ice bath was only nine seconds, I got that little bit of a boost of dopamine. I got a little bit of a boost of norepinephrine. There were things going on in my body to help me feel those feel good chemicals. So I know, I knew from that very first ice bath, I'm going to do this again. Not today, not right away, uh, but I knew I was going to do it again. And at that point, we started about a weekly practice. It was sort of once a week, once every other week, just schedule depending because we were still buying a lot of ice and making a lot of ice just in order to have a once a week ice bath. What I will say even though during this process, we invented the Morelsko Forge ice bath, I was getting in the ice as often as possible. So in the beginning, that was about once a week, once every other week. Sometimes it was just once every few weeks. Within that first year, when Jason and Tom invented the forge, I was then able to plunge daily. Or if I had an offending issue, if I did have an allergic reaction to something, I would get directly into the ice and have a reduction of that allergic reaction almost instantaneously. Wow. From my very first ice bath to full curing of all trace of autoimmune in my system, two years. Wow. So I went from being completely sick, 50 pounds over a week, 20 plus pills a day, plus two live antibody shots a month to two years had taking no prescription medications. I wasn't taking any vitamins or supplements because I wiped it all out. No antibody shots and zero trace of autoimmune in my system. And I did not tell my endocrinologist when I went in for my annual labs, I didn't say, Hey, I quit all my meds. How am I doing? Cause I, at that point I was starting not to trust the medical industry. So I went in for my annual labs. I just had her pull them. And then when she read the results, she's like, well, I'm going to keep everything the same. Everything's within normal range. You're looking good. I'd lost the weight. The very first year of ice baths, I lost all 50 pounds. She's like, you're, it's a miracle that you've lost weight because anyone with thyroid condition can tell you it's almost impossible to lose a single pound. She's like, this is great. Just keep doing what you're doing. Everything you're doing is working. And I said, that's fantastic because I'm not doing anything other than ice baths. I said, I've, I quit the medication months ago. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not taking any vitamins or supplements. And she was like, well, that's great. I hope I never have to see you again. And I was like, yeah, that is great. I hope I never have to see you again too. And as I'm walking out of the doctor's office for the last time, my endocrinologist's office, and I walk through the waiting room, I see about a dozen women overweight. Mm. miserable, heavy breathing, inflamed. And it took a few days for the anger to set in. And then I realized I'm angry. I am angry about this. Why am I angry? Well, for one, I'm angry because I just did what you called impossible. What this doctor said was impossible. I had an incurable chronic disease that I would be on medication for my entire life or I would die. And then I just told her, I cured this. There is no trace of this incurable disease in my system. And your biggest reaction is, I hope I never see you again. Not, hey, how can we tell other people, the 12 other women that are sitting in your waiting room, that there is hope, there is help. I realized that at that point, it was up to me. It was up to me to shout the healing benefits of the cold from the rooftops and let people know that this type of healing is possible. Because the first thing the doctors will tell you is that it's not. Yeah. Yeah, they will. And they want to just push the, not the supplements even, but the pills, you know, then you got the functional medicine doctor and then they want to do the supplements, but it's like, that's the, always the first line of defense and having an autistic child myself, the people have been trying to push drugs on her for her whole life. And that's just one thing I've always flat out refused because anytime we have tried them, they'd cause more harm than they do good, you know? And when you try to tell them, oh, we just took out food dyes and we took out gluten and dairy and things that she was reacting to and she's not having these horrible behaviors anymore. They're like, well, yeah, okay. And they don't really want to 
talk about how that could help other kids. It's just like, okay, well, good for you. You know, they just look at it as some anecdotal thing. So that's, they don't yeah. want to acknowledge that that could be the source of the healing. That was the biggest thing that I came across when it came to meeting with the doctors was that they're like, well, I'm glad that you're experiencing some relief. It might be the ice baths, but we don't know for sure. Mm, that is so frustrating. I <laughs> it was the only thing I changed. So yeah. I do. And I was doing intermittent extended fasting. I do believe that that had an effect on just getting rid of what did not belong in my body. Um, I would love to ask though, how old is your daughter? She just turned 14 a few weeks ago. Has she ever done an ice bath? She jumped in my plunge. Like she's, when she sees me doing something, she wants to do it, which is awesome. Yeah. So she did, I teach yoga. And so I was teaching a class and while I was downstairs teaching my class, she jumped in my plunge. <laughs> I have had some success with autism and the cold. Really? It helps. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. that's something, I mean, we're, I'm open to it. She sees me doing it every day. She does, she does try to jump in with me. So I'll let her put her arms in there when I'm in there. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm definitely willing to try it with her. Yeah. 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 I just say the idea is to meet the cold with calm and grace. Mm. Go, She's go always through. been a cold seeker. You know, I talk about her a lot on this podcast, but you know, from a very young age when it's like free, we live in Atlanta, so it doesn't get very, very cold here, but it'll get in the twenties and thirties. That child ever since she was three, it would be out of my yard barefoot in like a tank top and shorts in the middle of winter and be the happiest thing in the world. And we would always try to stop her. But this year, learning everything I've learned about quantum physics and circadian biology. I'm like, do it girl. Like I will come out there with you and let's lay in the yard together barefoot. Cool. Let's do it. Cause it's, oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she's intuitively always been drawn to cold. Um, and I've always been like, no, you're going to get sick, you know, <laughs> but cause that's what we were taught. We are yeah. taught we'll catch a cold. You, that'll be the death of you. Don't go outside with wet hair, all these different things. Yes. And if we look back into the history of humans, our bodies are designed for these extreme experiences. Our bodies are designed for extreme cold and extreme heat, extreme starvation even. That's what our bodies are designed for. They're not designed for these climate controlled environments mm -hmm. to be keeping us comfortable every step of the way. Yeah. You know, this is this is where we start to get lazy and complacent yeah. and then our bodies aren't doing the work that they need to do in order to keep up with their healing modalities. Yeah. We never experienced true winter because we've got heated seats in the car. We've got the heat on in the house. I mean, I've got the window open behind me. I drive my family crazy. <laughs> like I'm always going through the house, opening, turning off the lights and opening the windows. I'm like, <laughs> deal with it. This is for your health. And, yes. you know, instead of taking a bunch of supplements and doing all these things, why not try cold? Why not try to actually let your body experience a fast or what winter actually is when there is scarcity, when there is darkness and how that can heal us. I mean, I haven't been sick. I started doing ice baths in the beginning of November. Everyone around me, all my friends, my family hasn't been, I think, cause I'm forcing them to do what I'm doing, but everyone around me has been sick with some sort of a cold. And I've been around lots of people with colds. I haven't even had so much as a sniffle. And I usually go down with a couple colds by now, mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing. I mean, nothing. And what have I been doing? Jumping in ice water, like either every other day or every day for the last couple of months. And I'm like, well, I think there's a correlation there. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you put your body in that extreme environment, it jumps into action. Everything in our body says, oh my gosh, you're trying to kill me. I need to do my best to keep you alive. So our immune system jumps into action. Our metabolism gets revved up. Our mm -hmm. white blood cells go through the roof. All of these things are working to keep our body at an optimal um, space just to keep us alive. So- yeah makes sense to me. I did get sick this year. I hadn't gotten sick in years, not since starting deliberate cold exposure. A few weeks before Thanksgiving, I went down hard oh, and I man. will say, I think it would have been a lot worse if I was not already a practitioner of the cold. 
and if I was not doing regular ice baths and sauna therapy, I think it would have been a lot worse. And I think, I really think that that's the answer. What I'm, what I'm practicing now is learning whether or not it makes a difference to do it once I am sick. So mm-hmm. when I oh, got yeah. sick, I was like, all right, now's the time. I don't hardly ever get sick. So now's the time to check and see what happens as I'm sick taking an ice bath and doing sauna. What I learned was that when I'm congested, like if I've got a lot of congestion, the cold's not necessarily the thing because it kind of freezes it in place. Okay. And the sauna is great because detox and it helps break up all of those things. When I started to feel better, but my energy was low, I started getting back into the ice because it's going to help with the energy. It's going to help with the mood enhancing chemicals, the dopamine, the norepinephrine, and just helps bring back some of that resilience, you know, that we lose when we've been couch bound for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Normally, if I have sinus issues, whether it's seasonal allergies or whatever, I will still do an ice bath because it will clear me out. I noticed that with this illness, it was just a little bit different with that congestion. I needed to back off the ice a little bit, but I did try it. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I I was going to, that was one of my questions I was going to ask you is whether or not people should experiment with it. If they're sick, if they're feeling they're coming down with something or. If you can't, if you're already doing it prior to getting sick, I think it's okay. As long as you're not running an active fever, I think when it comes to, and again, I'm not a doctor, but when it comes to the body running an active fever, it's there in order to heal us. It's there in order to alert our bodies to the healing that we need. A fever is there to help us beat whatever is going on in our system. So there are times that these things are beneficial. So I think if you're not running an active fever, take it slow, see how you feel. If it makes you feel good, do it. If it doesn't, don't. The worst that could happen is you take an ice bath and you're going, oh, that didn't make me feel so great. I think I'll wait a few days. Yeah. And And it's, um, it's a mind body connection. This is one of the greatest things the cold has taught me is, has helped me with is that reconnecting of the conversation between the brain and the body. Yeah, I agree. I mean, cause you don't really have a choice. <laughs> Once you're in the ice, you're like, Ooh, breathe. breathe. You know, it's, it's crazy. Like it, it's hard to explain to people what happens when you first get in there. It's like, Oh my gosh. But then if you just, cause I'm a yoga teacher and I've been learning how to breathe, you know, and teaching how to breathe for 12 years. And so being able to add in breath work to the cold is a hundred percent, I think key. (laughs) Yes. If I didn't know how to do specific breathing exercises to activate parasympathetic, I probably would have hyperventilated myself to death. Um, but just getting in there breathing. And then there's like that 90 sec after 90 seconds, there's like, I guess it's called the turnover where you're like, Oh, okay. And then, and then you're like, okay, wow. But it just establishes this amazing mind body connection and this sense of like, I don't know, it's just so empowering. Like you feel like you can pretty much do anything like you were talking about after you do an ice bath, you're like, come on world. Like let's <laughs> what you got, you know, I'm ready. Bring it on. I've Bring done an ice bath. I can do anything. That's, right. that's still how I feel. That's still how yeah. I feel because here I am four years into my practice. I stand in front of an ice bath every single time and question what the heck, what the heck I'm doing with my life. Like, why am I here? Why am I doing this? And I know that it's healed me and I still hesitate. Yeah. And once I'm in the water up to the neck, hands in, mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, I'm here. Where else am I going to go? I'm here. I'm doing it. Then once you're out, it's like, I'm done. I've done the hardest thing that I will do all day today. So anything else I face is automatically going to be a little bit easier for me. And I think it's interesting the way that you brought it back to the breath too. I noticed this in people who have done yoga, breath work, or any woman who's ever been in labor. Oh yeah. That's you, you. natural. You can <laughs> slow down. Yeah. You can slow down your breath. You can focus on that breath. You understand what it's like when you can't take a breath and you know that you will survive this. You breathe mm-hmm. slowly. Yeah. And I think that's an important part of this practice is getting back in touch with our ability to be stronger 
than our body's physically most strong physical response, stronger mentally than our physical fight or flight response. We have the capability to train ourselves to do that. Yeah, we do. And, you know, just the, what you were talking about earlier with the inflammation aspect, you know, I've been, I've struggled a lot with, you know, my just gut and gut health. And that's why I went to a carnivore diet because my gut was a mess. My joints were inflamed. And I just did a in-depth like gene analysis with another doctor that was on my podcast. And I found out I have like eight genes that are like IBS genes, like celiac genes. I literally have like eight genes that are like, your gut's going to be a freaking disaster. And so that's why I think carnivore was so magic for me, but you know, (laughs) that I will get super inflamed and I, it's like, I don't want to be on the carnivore diet forever. I don't want to have to just micromanage my food. And so since I've been doing ice bathing and then circadian biology, walking outside barefoot, looking at sunrise every day, I've been able to eat things that I never would. On Christmas, I was like, I'm eating whatever I want today. And I'm not going to make it a, I'm not going to make it a binge where I'd go crazy, but I'm going to, if I want to have a slice of pie, I'm going to do it. So the day after Christmas, I woke up and I was like, Oh, there's I just felt, you know, it just didn't feel that great. So I jumped in the ice and it was like, magic. You know, I did six minutes in 35 degrees and was like all that inflammation was just poof, just gone. I mean, it was amazing. And there are a few different things I think that happen when, when we take this on, whether we're taking on cold as a practice or if we're just focusing on eating better, once we start to clean up some of that toxicity in our bodies, I noticed that when I introduce an offender, yeah. It clears out much quicker because there's not so much to get rid of. Your body's like, okay, you don't belong here. I'm getting rid of it. And the, the reason I like the ice bath for that, partly it's the inflammation reduction. Partly it's that lymphatic flush. Mm. It is literally pushing toxins out of your body and saying, let's just recycle. Let's just get yep. rid of anything that doesn't belong there. And Again, those feel good chemicals, the dopamine, the norepinephrine, that stuff just makes you feel good. So when you're bloated and you're a little bit tired and you're a little bit cloudy brain because of everything that you chose to eat the day before or day of, you're going to feel a little bit better because you're introducing those feel good chemicals that just makes everything easier to deal with. Yeah, it does. It's so, and like a day like Christmas would have had me out for probably four days and it was like, okay, take an ice bath and go on with your life. You know, it was amazing. So I think that that's, you know, just for that, the feel good chemicals and the inflammation aspect, it's amazing. And, um, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you about, because when we talk about thyroid disorders and Hashimoto's, I have a lot of ladies in my private group and just women that I've worked with over the last few years in nutrition counseling that have Hashimoto's and have thyroid issues. And, a lot of them are really terrified of extreme stress because it's like your thyroid's already not functioning properly. So an ice bath would be a hormetic stressor. Fasting would be a hormetic stressor, but it sounds like you doing those things actually was extremely healing for you. Am I, can you yeah. talk a little bit more about that journey with the, the Hashimoto's and how it helped? Yeah. So one of the reasons that I thought for sure ice baths are not going to be for me was because with Hashimoto's, your body struggles to regulate against outside temperature. Mm -hmm. So you tend to be more cold when you shouldn't be cold. You tend to be more hot when you shouldn't be hot because your body is just all out of whack. The thing that I like to tell people, whether you have Hashimoto's or not, and, and this, this quite specifically with Hashimoto's, Yes, it's uncomfortable. The cold is uncomfortable. This is a passive therapy. Mm. Show up, you sit down, you breathe. And in about two to five minutes, you've done a complete reset on your body. So it's like a defibrillator shock to your um, vagal nerve. And it just resets everything. Because when you have autoimmune or you have a thyroid condition, everything's a little out of whack. You know, your hormones aren't producing properly, specifically your, your own body is attacking your thyroid when you have Hashimoto's. So I think of it as like a dog without a job. 
And when my body starts attacking itself with autoimmune, it's because I'm not introducing external stressors. Mm. When I started introducing fasting and ice, my body had a job to do. It had to fight first to keep me alive. It had to get rid of anything that didn't belong there. And I think that's what the fasting did was first, what's my body going to feed on? It's naturally intuitive. It's going to feed on that which does not belong. It's going to feed on the cells that don't belong there. And then with the ice bath, that vagal nerve reset, it's like a defibrillator shock to the system. It says, hey, wake up. Stop, stop eating me. You have a job to do. You have to focus on keeping this human alive. And so the more I was introducing those external factors, the more my body could stop attacking itself. Mm. And again, like I said, I'm not a doctor, but I believe that that's how that worked. And yeah, when we think of Hashimoto's or we think of autoimmune, we're thinking we don't want to put our bodies through stress, but there's a such thing as good stress. You don't build biceps by not tearing and inflaming muscles. You don't get to build stronger muscles without first tearing, ripping, and inflaming those muscles. So sometimes we do have to introduce an external stressor in order to increase the body's internal ability to manage stress. So it sounds counterintuitive, but so is counter steering on a motorcycle. You push right, you go right. That doesn't sound right, but that's exactly how it works. Wow. Yeah. I feel like we've kind of overcorrected a little bit. And then I have women, they're just terrified of fasting. They're terrified of doing anything that could be stressful on the body. And, but they just keep getting sicker and sicker. The scale isn't moving. I think this is the biggest reason that, you know, women are not losing the weight is because they're just not putting their body under any stress at all. And so it's like finding that that balance is tough because for me, you know, I figured out with ice bathing that I did it. I decided, you know, I'm hardcore. Like if you tell me to do something and I have a goal in mind, I'm going to do it. I'm just at that point. Maybe it's that I'm in my early forties that I'm just like, once you hit 40, you're just like, you stop giving as many fucks, whatever. You're just like, I made it here. I don't care. I'm doing this. And so I did an ice bath starting the beginning of November, every single day. But then my cycle was five days late. And so I know my cycle is like this vital sign. If it's late, then I have done, I've over, over fasted, over stressed. And so um, now I'm doing every other day and I, I, I think it's good. So how do you, um, you know, how do you deal with that with women in particular? Do you have them go in the ice every day? Do you have them kind of play around and just see what works best for them? What, what is kind of like your best practices for women? Well, what I love about the cold is that what's challenging, what another thing that's challenging about the cold, I don't believe there's a such thing as a best practice with the cold. Mm, okay. There is not one formula that is going to work for everyone. And I also don't think that there's one formula that's going to work for me every single time or work for you every single time. I think it's about checking in first with the body. If I'm fighting getting into the cold, why? Mm -hmm. Is there fear? Is there excitement? What am I afraid of? Or am I doing it just to check it off a list? If Mm -hmm. I do it every single day for the month of December, who am I trying to prove this to? Mm -hmm. What am I trying to prove? It's okay to do these things and see how far we can go with it. But I don't think anything needs to be done every single day. We don't work out every single day. Right. You know, we don't, we don't take runs. We don't take 5k runs every single day. You know, there is a benefit to the time off and what I, what I've experienced in my cycle might be different than what you experience in yours. So we were talking about, um, someone, someone earlier who, mm, I'm going to say this correctly. Some women say to avoid ice or cold around the cycle period. Mm-hmm. Some women also say avoid any extremes around the sky, the cycle. So no yeah. extreme heat and sauna, no extreme cold. What I've experienced is that it helps me mitigate my premenstrual symptoms. Yeah. So it's going to help me with that hormonal fluctuation where I'm feeling foggy or I'm dropping everything or I'm feeling irritable. It helps me with that. It helps me with the tenderness of the breasts that I experience every once in a while. If my breasts start to feel tender and uncomfortable, I go right for the cold. 
Mm. because I know it's inflammation and I know it's flushing too. It's flushing of toxins through the system. So I want to take an ice bath. I've had clients with endometriosis and PCOS that have such great relief of the cold for their symptoms that they want to do it more frequently. And they also understand every single day is not necessarily the answer. So this is one of those cases where minimum effective dose, if it's, if that water is under 35 degrees, two to five minutes up to the neck, fully submerged, you're fine. And it doesn't have to be every day. Hmm. We need off days too. So I encourage people try it around your cycle. What did it do? Did it make you want to take a nap or did it wake you up? Did it help alleviate some of the stress you were experiencing, some of that foggy brain, some of that irritability, or did it compound it and increase it? And what works today for this cycle may not be the same for next month's cycle. Mm. Our bodies are ever changing beings. Our mentally, our mental capacity is ever changing. So I think it's a conversation we get to have with ourselves each day as we're standing before the tub. What am I working on? How is this going to help? And if I'm afraid, what am I afraid of? If I'm afraid of fasting or if I'm afraid of the cold, what am I afraid of? Mm. What do I have to lose? Taking an ice bath is not going to kill me. Right. Eating food for 24 hours is nowhere near going to kill me. So what am I afraid of? And in that moment, when I want to break, when I want to give up, when I want to walk away, what is keeping me holding on for me, for you, we were at our wits end. Yep. I either want someone to come to me completely fed up with everything they've been doing and ready to try anything new, or they want to live in that land of the comfort and you go ahead, you do that over there because I have no room for it. Yep. So when I'm working with clients, show up. You got to be ready. You got to be ready to try something that you have not tried before. Yep. That's where you have to get to. I mean, yeah, (laughs) it is different and it can be scary. And I think it's important too to remind people when they're afraid of these things, the chemicals in your brain creating fear are the same chemicals in your brain that create excitement. Mm. What if what you're feeling is excitement? And I think it's, it's Brene Brown or Glennon Doyle. They did a podcast together. So I don't remember exactly which one said this, but they were talking about fear and they were talking about excitement and they were, and it was in terms of their kids. Like what, what do the kids think when they say, mom, I'm afraid to do this or mom, I'm excited to do this. And your belly says, like you get that gut feeling. This is, this is really scary. What's on the other side? What's on the other side of the ice bath? What's on the other side of a 24 or a 48 hour fast? Well, I'll tell you one of the greatest talks I ever gave was at 72 hour 72 of a fast. Mm -hmm. And I was so clear and I was so on point. And I said, if I ever do a Ted talk, I'm going to fast for three days before I start talking (laughs) and do an ice bath. Yes. But we're talking about minimum effective dose, recreating that connection between the brain and the body, not recreating that conversation and try it. The worst that could happen is you try it and you say never again. I have guided thousands of plunges. Two people out of thousands, two people said they would never do it again. And both of those people had a great experience. They just checked it off their bucket list and decided they didn't have to do it again. Mm. (laughs) I get it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's where I got to with, with trying it. I was like, you know what, what's, what am I scared of? Why, why would I just not try this? And then, you know, I'm somebody who I just, I'm like addicted to it at this point. I mean, it just makes you feel so good. There's something about standing outside on the deck afterwards when it's 30 degrees outside and and feeling warm. Yeah. You're in your bikini. It's 30 degrees outside. You're covered in water and you're like laughing hysterically, like warming yourself up. And you're like, what the heck? This is crazy. One of the most powerful phrases I use when guiding a a session is this is what cold feels like. Mm. We may not know, we may not have ever been exposed to this type of cold ever in our lives. So we don't know. And if we can just tell the brain, this is what it's supposed to feel like. This is what cold feels like. It's like, oh, oh, okay. Well, I know what hunger feels like. And I know what heat feels like. 
okay, this is, I know what love feels like. Mm-hmm. This is what cold feels like. Okay. This is what cold feels like. Yes. It helps us wrap, wrap our brains around this extreme experience. And the, when you say ice addict, we say we create instant ice addicts because yeah. of that chemical dump. Yeah. Like once you've done it, you want to sometimes get right back in. Well, if I, I do this good. Yeah, I'll probably feel even better. Do twice a day. I've done yeah. that. <laughs> minimum effective dose here, people. Minimum <laughs> effective dose. Yep. And if you do feel that good, which you're going to, remember that when you're standing in front of it a day later or four years later and saying, why don't I do this? Yep. Yeah. And I think that you're right about kind of listening to your body. Like we're so disconnected from our bodies and me, even as a yoga teacher for 12 years, telling people how to feel their bodies and breathe and get into the, you know, get into sensation. I have been very guilty of being cut off from my body. And, you know, I think that that is the thing where, you know, when I did get my cycle this month, when it was five days late, I was like, ding, 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 warning signal. You overdid it. And then there were a few days there when I did have my cycle where everything in my body was like, no, like, no, you, you just don't do this. And so, and I really had to listen because I wanted that high. I wanted that feeling of getting back in the ice so badly. I was like, oh, I want to do it. And I'm like, no, my body right now is just screaming at me. Don't do this. Give it some time. We'll get back in. It'll be fine. But that's, I think that can be a hard one for people too, because we we're good at overriding. We're good at overriding and not feeling, and then we're good at overriding the other way. And it's just, yeah, it can be, I think it could definitely be tricky for people. And we like to think of our bodies as these machines. Well, I do A, I do B, and, I get B. I do B. and that's not how bodies work. Mm-hmm. Bodies are much more complicated. We are much more complicated, which is why I think it's important to stop, pause, have that conversation with yourself. What do I need today? Am I just trying to feel good? Am I just really craving feeling good? Am I actively emotionally activated or dysregulated? Do I need a little help? Do I need a little boost? It is okay. Even though I say two to five minutes, it is okay to get all the way in and then all the way out. Mm. Just like that all the way in, all the way out. It is okay to get into my pool right now at 55 degrees and do a couple laps. Yeah. It is okay. It is okay to pause for three minutes, put the phone away, sit in the sunshine, or even if there's no sunshine, it's cloudy day, sit outside and breathe Mm. for three minutes. What do I need right now? Not do, what, I, what do I want? What I want is a whole apple pie and a tub of ice cream. <laughs> what do I need right now? Yeah. And really listen. Yeah. Because our yeah. bodies will tell us. They will. And we do all need cold as part of our lives. It's something that we just don't get. I agree. Even people who are like, well, I grew up in Wisconsin. Okay. But how much did you, how much time did you spend? Not in cold air, in cold water. Because it's the water that's penetrating the skin. These cryotherapy chambers are adorable. They're air. <laughs> that's what I was, I was doing therapy. that a couple of years ago, thinking I was getting cold therapy. And number one, I burned my skin. I got this horrible burn on my waist and it, the was, nitrous. it was awful. It wouldn't go away for like a week. And then I was like, am I even, is it, I think that there's a benefit to it, but it's, it pales in comparison to getting into an ice bath. Because it's going to get the surface of your skin cold, which is going to, it's going to make you alert. It's just not going to penetrate. Whereas Mm -hmm. the water penetrates, the water Mm -hmm. activates our fight or flight. The water is going to force all of our heat to go to our internal organs. And it's going to, um, work out our vascular systems. Yeah. This is the only way that we can get constriction in our vascular system, which then in turn, believe it or not, as it gets colder outside, your body is better equipped to deal with that cold. Yep. Yeah. And when I get out of the bath, like my skin is red. I mean, I'm a pretty fair skin person, but like my chest is red, my legs are red, my stomach is red. And I'm like, Ooh, there's some blood, <laughs> blood flow happening blood here. Flow. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. And, yeah. um, I want to talk a little bit about haplotype, but I'm going to get a little bit 
weird for some of my followers. They may not want to hear this. So fast forward like a minute or so, if you don't want to hear about my um, personal life, but you know, when I hit 30, and this is a taboo topic, but when I hit about 35, my sex drive went to shit, like gone. Okay. So ice bathing six weeks in all of a sudden I'm like, well, hello, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and can I also say, um, the experience, you know, of, of being with my husband, what am I back in my twenties? Like what just happened? Like, I'm surprised I'm not turning beet red right now, but I, I am, <laughs> I know. I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? Because, you know, this is something that we don't talk about as women, like I, where the hell did my sex drive go? And then when, when I am in the act, it's not as amazing as it once was, what has shifted, what has changed. And then doing ice baths for, you know, the last couple months, boom, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what is going on? I here? have some theories here. Okay. I let, let's, theories. let's hear okay. <laughs> For one, two. So when I was in the throes of illness with Hashimoto's, I was overweight. I was depressed. I was anxious. I had chronic pain, chronic fatigue. So we're battling against all these things on a day-to-day -day basis. What in my head makes me feel sexy? Oh, yeah. What in my head or my body at that stage in my life was making me feel like a hot piece of tail that my husband wanted? Yep. It was dormant. It yep. was dormant at best. Yep. And the ice does a few different things. For one, circulation. Yeah. So when I'm in an ice bath, I used to keep my legs pressed together. Mm. And I discovered that when you open your legs and you are activating those nether regions with the cold, again, you're talking about circulation. Mm. Another thing that the cold does for us is it increases our testosterone. So uh. in men or in women, testosterone is important for your sex drive. It's important for your energy. It's important for regulating your emotions. It's important for hair growth. It's important for, it's important for so many things. I don't have time on one podcast to list them all. And so when you get that surge of testosterone, yeah, your body's coming alive. Your sex drive is coming alive. You couple that with that feel good chemical dump. All of a sudden you're removing stress. Mm. you're able to pause and you're reigniting that conversation between the brain and the body. Once again, we're reigniting that conversation between the brain and the body. So we're removing stress. We're adding feel good chemicals. We're increasing circulation. We're stimulating our testosterone and we're empowering ourselves. I don't know about you, but now when I get out of the ice bath, I'm like, well, I am a goddess and I am ready for all of it. <laughs> Yes. I mean, yeah, I'm out there in my bikini to stand on my deck. Like what's up world. Like Not to mention the way that the cold has that, that way of like just cinching everything in a little bit. So even when I was heavier, I could see a difference in the tightening of my body post ice bath. Yeah. So if I were a model and I had a shoot to get to, you better believe I'd want to take an ice bath first. You know, Absolutely. but yeah. yeah, you're feeling so good. And, and it does this for women. It also does this for men. Um, the, the testosterone increase is real. My friends that well, uh, yeah. post ice bath that I love how men talk about too. They talk about, Oh, you're taking ice bath. You better be prepared for some shrinkage maybe while you're in, but <laughs> I tell you what, when that circulation goes right back into the body, when you get out, things are coming alive. Yeah, And your sex life will, I mean, I'm in a 10 year marriage here, a nearly 10 year marriage here. All I can say is the power of the ice works. Yeah. I've been with my husband for 17 years. And so <laughs> we've been through a lot of stuff together and yeah, I mean, things are good. I'll just say that he will probably kill me for having this conversation <laughs> publicly. <laughs> Blame it on me. Blame yeah. It on me. And, and I, and I think this is important for women too, because when we hit our thirties and I, and I'm 40 now too, when we hit our thirties, even without an autoimmune condition, even without yeah. thyroid issues, things start to take a dive. My Your testosterone was a five when I was 35 years old and that I had no real health problems, but I had started putting on weight and wasn't feeling well, had my hormones tested. My testosterone was like a five. 
And so I've been dealing with low testosterone for years now, you know, and no, and my doctor said, we can give you some cream. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. You know, why not try an ice bath instead of putting a cream on your body? Putting synthetics in our body. Why not find a way to produce these things naturally? And I think that's the other thing that we're missing when it comes to modern medicine. We think, I thought, I'll just speak for me here. I thought, well, I'll take a pill and it'll all be fine. Mm. I'll take a pill, Mm -hmm. I'll use a cream and all my problems will go away. That's not how that works. Mm -hmm. Number one, they're synthetic. So our bodies don't accept it the same way. Number two, they all have fillers and preservatives, which don't belong in our bodies. So we're going to have side effects from these pills that we're taking or from these creams that we're taking simply because of the things that are in them. And our bodies know to reject, reject these things. Yep. So if you tell yep. me in my mid thirties or now at forties, Hey, you want your sex drive to be a little bit better. You want your metabolism to be a little bit stronger. You want your energy to be a little bit better. Ice bath. Yep. Two minutes. Everyone has two minutes. Yep. I agree. And, you know, I have so many ladies in my group and then that follow me also, I know that listen to this podcast that are postmenopausal. And so, and I know you have a lot of ladies that you've coached that are postmenopausal. So I always get the question like, well, how does this benefit me if I'm postmenopausal and I don't have the same hormonal fluctuations or issues that someone who's perimenopausal or even just having a regular cycle, how does that work? And what kind of benefits can a postmenopausal woman see from the ice? Well, I can say, uh, again, I'm not a doctor, right? This is all experiential. And for the women that I've guided and for women, I know that have taken on this practice post menopause, they see an increase in energy. They see a reduction in weight. So no matter what, you're going to lose a couple of extra pounds. Like if you're carrying any extra weight, you're going to see a reduction in that. You're going to start feeling better. You still get that chemical dump, whether you're post menopause or not, you're still going to get that norepinephrine um, and that dopamine. Here's the other thing that we've discovered when it comes to ice baths below 35 degrees. The type of chemical dump you get is pretty similar to an orgasm, Mm, which is why we're creating instant ice addicts. So when you're bringing these things online in the body that you think have gone dormant, you're coming back alive and you can still boost testosterone in in post-menopause. You can still regulate hormones post-menopause. The other part about it, and this is something I'm learning just going through these things, just going through aging, is that our bodies think, okay, well, you're done having babies. You're no good to us anymore. Well, when we can start bringing these things back online again, our bodies are going, well, maybe you're not totally useless. Maybe you (laughs) do still belong in this world if you can't produce a baby still. So it's like our bodies are like, wait, you still have work to do. So again, we're introducing these external factors to intentionally create a little bit of stress because discomfort is where growth comes from. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. You yeah. don't grow because we're trying to save ourselves from any amount of discomfort. And I think that's our tendency when we get sick and when we start aging, it's like, we just want to feel good. Yeah. We're tired of all the things that have been introduced to make us feel not good. We want to feel good. Well, if you want to feel good, you have to go through a little bit of stress. You have to go through a little bit of physical challenge. I remember when I first got sick and I was barely 33 and my husband looked at me and goes, well, babe, are you sure you're not just fighting the signs of aging? Oh God. Yeah. I hate that conversation. We're still married. So clearly we worked it out, <laughs> but I tell you what, at 33 years old, I should not have been feeling the way that I was. No, at no. 43, you shouldn't be feeling that way. At 53, mm-hmm. at 63, I know ladies in their seventies doing this practice and they're getting their lives back in ways they never could have imagined. That's why I'm so passionate about getting this message out, you know, and I'm shifting my platform. Like, yes, I still talk about diet and nutrition, but I want to talk about these other things because I feel like they're so much more powerful and I'm seeing people of all ages. You know, I love my postmenopausal women. I will be with you guys in a number of years, you know, we have to reject this idea that as we age, we're just supposed to fall apart and feel like complete ass. Like 
that's what I'm sh trying to shift my platform to do. And just my work to do is to help people as they're aging so that, you know, when you're old, it's not like you're decrepit and have no memory and can't do anything and have no quality of life. Like when I'm in my seventies, eighties, and even nineties, I want to be vibrant. I want to be enjoying life. I don't want to be bedridden, you know? So how do we, how do we do that? And I feel like these modalities like ice baths, like circadian biology, going outside barefoot, being in the sun, that that's really a huge part of this and fasting, you know, it's a huge part of how we age gracefully without, you know, like you said, at 33 being told, well, is that aging? No, <laughs> it's no. not. <laughs> no, it's not. Not. I'm, and now that I'm, now that I'm 40, I'll be 41 in just a few days. I understand that it's up to me how I feel and I want to mm -hmm. age effectively. Mm -hmm. I feel better at 40 than I did at 30 before I got sick. Yeah. So, and it is, it is a conglomerate. It is a cocktail of all these things. It's the waking up and staring at the sun and the seeing it before you go to bed. It is the red light therapy. It is the mm -hmm. extreme heat. It is the extreme cold. It is the fasting. It's all kinds of other things too. Massage, yep. yoga, movement, breath work, all these different things combined to help us, believe it or not, in each of these things we're talking about, it's going back to where we started. Yes. It's yes. going back to where humans started. I personally believe that from the moment we invented fire, we became more technologically advanced than biologically our bodies would ever be able to keep up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So our bodies still think we should be running across glaciers barefoot in a loincloth to grab a meal. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's <laughs> my husband comes outside. I'm in the ice one day. It was like in the twenties and I'm out there up to the neck, you know, in the ice, he's like, you're going to get hypothermia. And I'm like, no, I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not. I'm probably going to prevent <laughs> getting hypothermia. And, um, you know, the thing you said about ancestrally, I do want to dive into that a little bit because I've learned a lot about haplotype and I know, I don't know if you study this at all, but I know I'm an H1. So my mother's DNA, we are North, you know, Western European, Arctic blood, all of that. What about somebody? Cause I'm friends with um, Dr. Rimka. I'm not sure if you know her. I was just going to bring her up. Yeah. When you started talking about yeah, her. She's a, her, she's a good friend of mine lives a couple of miles from here. She's I was going to say she's a neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. She is really a neighbor and I've known her for years, love her to death. And, uh, but she's always been like terrified of cold and her haplotype is equatorial. So she's, you know, it's different for her body. Her body is going to have a little bit of a different mitochondrial response yeah. to the cold than mine is. Um, do you still say like, let's encourage this person to get in the cold? Do you work with somebody of an equatorial haplotype differently than you would a Northern? Like, what are your thoughts on that whole haplotype thing? Well, I think first of all, the cold's good for everyone. Mm -hmm. No matter, no matter what your ancestral history is or not. And we can be, I believe we can be more powerful than our genetics. We have the, we have the ability to be more powerful than what our genetic genetics are. No one in my entire family has ever had autoimmune. So why me? Mm. No one in my family has had a history of some of the illness that I've experienced. So why me? And when it comes to me guiding people, no matter what your ancestral history is, no matter what your illness is, aside from if you've had a pace, if you have a pacemaker, I'm going to use the same calm, mindful, sensory immersive technique to guide you through an ice bath as I do everyone else. The times that I change it is when I notice that your chest breathing, your eyes are really shifty and you're not quite calm. So my goal when I'm guiding someone using the Morotsko method is to make sure that by the time your toes touch water, you are in an active state of calm. If you enter the cold with anxiety, you don't stand near a chance to get to two minutes. Mm -hmm. If you enter the cold with a calm mindset and I prepped you properly to be prepared for that hyperventilative response, you have just as much ability as your ancestral opposite to breathe through that, that fight or flight response, to breathe through that physical discomfort. Mm. So I believe 
no matter who you are, you have the ability to take an ice bath. Got it. And you may feel, it may feel different. Years ago, I was an esthetician. I had to be aware that when I was waxing redheads, their pain tolerance was going to be much lower than anyone else. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. They, I don't know what it is. It's just something about their genes that ripping hair out of their bodies is a little bit more painful than anyone else. Interesting. So yeah, you might husband. have a different, yeah, you might have a different experience. You might react a little differently. You may feel things differently. It's still going to be beneficial for your body. Okay. Awesome. I love that. And I wanted to have that conversation about postmenopausal women and people of equatorial haplotype, because I don't want anyone to feel like, well, nope, this, I'm just going to knock not for this. Me. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that's, you know, when you say ice bath, that's the first thing people want to do is find a reason. They want to not, tell you all the reasons not to do it, that, they, that do. they can't do it. And I'm yeah. here to tell you whatever reason you're telling yourself you can't is the reason you ought to. Mm. I love that. I love that. And, and let's talk about like some, I know you said there's no best practices, but just, you know, I think it's Soderberg is her last name, Susanna Soderberg. Is that, I've probably butchered that one. Oh, okay. I was talking with, um, what's her name? Kristen about her. Um, she was on Dr. Huberman's podcast recently. Oh, cool. And so, so it's kind of created this interest around cold therapy and women. Um, and she says that 11 minutes a week is what she recommends for people to do as far as cold therapy goes. Like that's her minimum effective dose that she's in combining it with 57 minutes a week of sauna therapy. And so people in my private group, I asked them like, what questions would you want me to ask Adrian? And that was one of the questions is like, do you have a specific like minimum effective dose that you have for people, a temperature, a time? You've mentioned that a couple of times, but I'm just I wanted do, to get some specifics. I do a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. First, I think every ice bath should be below 35 degrees, period. Mm, okay. I mean, I think these cold plunges at 39 and 40 are cute. I don't think that you're activating <laughs> fight, or, fight or flight. And to me, the point is to activate fight or flight. The point is to put your body in such an extreme situation that you then mentally have to prepare and teach yourself how to calmly move through that because you're teaching mm -hmm. yourself mental, emotional, and physical resilience. So that being said, I love it below 35. Now, and that's where I start people, whether you've taken Ooh. a nice back before or not, if you come to see me, that's where you're starting. So it took me six weeks to get there. <laughs> you were also on your own. You didn't yeah. have a coach. So no coach. Just if me. I'm guiding someone, I'm there to help with that Ooh. process. Okay. That being said, anything below 55, like Ben Greenfield says, anything below 55, you are going to start doing the work. I also like to say any amount of cold is a good amount of cold. If you are uncomfortable, you're doing the work. Okay. Then I like to say two minutes for minimum effective dose. If you're submerged up to the neck mm -hmm. and your hands are feet are in and feet are in two minutes. That being said, again, I think it's good to focus on the mind body conversation. So I don't set a timer that tells me it's been two minutes. It's time to get out. I set a stopwatch. That's what I've and been I doing. Yep. Yeah. And I set it, <laughs> I out set it to the side. because too, then when you press start, you have to get in. Like, there's yeah. you're like, ah, you know, time. Like, yeah, it's like, it's time, it's time. <laughs> so I will, I will press start. I'll get in and I'll trust my body. I know when that surge of feel good chemicals comes in, I can feel it. I know my, I have not hyperventilated since the beginning, but I know when my breath is calm. I also know when it's like, okay, it's time to get out. And I push just a little further past when my body's like, okay, it's time to get out. I'm like, okay, just a little longer. We can do it. And I will tell you, I will almost guaranteed be getting out of that ice bath at three and a half minutes. Okay. okay. And whether I'm doing that once a week, three times a week or five times a week, my body knows when too much is too much. Yeah. So even if I'm doing cycling with contrast, so I'll start in the ice, I do a sauna, go back to the ice, back to the sauna. I like to always end on cold. And my last ice bath of a contrast session might only be just get in, get out. It might only be a minute. Okay. If I've already done my two minutes, I don't try to push myself in a contrast session. And again, throughout the week, 
It's just like working out. I may have a goal of three to five times a week, but if I do it three times, I'm still accomplished. Mm -hmm. If I do it once, I'm still accomplished. So again, thinking about what your body needs. I don't know about that 11 minutes and 57 minutes stuff. I don't have time for that kind (laughs) of math and science. I will tell you what, but I do know that there are times when I'm fighting it and I know it's exactly what I need. Mm. And there are times when I'm pushing it and I have to stop myself and say, are you doing this for you? Or are you doing this to prove a point? Yeah. And it's always easier with friends. Always easier with friends. When I can get a group of friends around, I'm a little less miserable about it. Yep. Yeah. I've been totally solo this whole time. You're <laughs> well, you're the badass. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's crazy, but I do play music. Like I'll have a song, I'll do a little playlist. I'm like, that song's five minutes, that one's two minutes, that one's three minutes. So a song that I really enjoy. And then I put the stop, I hit stopwatch, then I press play, and then I put the phone up and then I'm in. And I'm like, okay. And I do have, so for people doing this on their own, I have online deliberate cold exposure meditations. Okay. You go to the Morotsko Forge YouTube channel under the meditations playlist, whether it's a two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute ice bath, or if you're focused on healing or you're focused on something else, you just press play. I will tell you what to do every step of the way. You will get into the water when I tell you to get into the water. You will get out when I tell you to get out. If you just want to feel like you've got some guidance and you don't have access to an, a certified guide, you can still access these playlists and I tell you what to do. And I know a lot of people that got started in deliberate cold exposure just using these playlists because mm, you're a little awesome. less alone and there's someone there telling you this is what to do. This is what to feel. This is what to think. This is, you know. It helps. Yeah. I know Dr. Remka was talking about your playlist and she uses those when she does her plunges. She's so rad. She really is. It's important to, especially if we have someone who's really struggling to think about what is our earliest memory of of discomfort with the cold. Mm. Some kids when they were little were ice skating and fell in a lake. Some kids were pushed into a frozen lake by their brother or sister. Some people have gone through the muck of the cold. And so it is important, I think, when you're really struggling, think about what that earliest uncomfortable memory is with the cold and understand that this is your opportunity as an adult to reframe that from a place of safety. Yep, I agree. You can become more, you can become stronger than your reaction to the cold. Yeah. And what's, you know, probably one of the most amazing health recovery stories that you've seen of people that you've coached over the last few years? What's, is anyone coming to mind in particular? (laughs) Yes. Cara Dunn. Ah, yeah. I had on my podcast, she's a young woman who developed the Fisher Miller syndrome of Guillain-Barre syndrome in her early twenties and went from total body paralysis and a feeding tube to now thinking of re-enrolling back in medical school because of the ways the cold has helped her get her entire life back. She does still have Guillain-Barre, but she's gotten her life back. I've seen people reverse MS, uh, Julie Blue. She's another one that's on my podcast. And I, and I just interview people who have had these experiences. So she's reversed MS. Uh, Dean Hall, he um, cured cancer through this process. Um, gosh, there, there are just so many, there are so many I've, I've worked with children with autism Mm. a 16 year old that started coming to me a little over two years ago. And now he's going into the Marines. Like what he's, he has moved through high school. He finished out high schools actively right now, finishing out high school, socializing, doing, getting good grades, being a part of things, has a job, things that mom kind of wondered if he was ever actually going to achieve or get through at at one point in time, it was like, he's going to fail 10th grade. There's no way he's going to get past 10th grade. And now he's just got a whole new lease on life because he conquered the cold. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And I've seen this help with substance abuse, recovery, depression, Mm. anxiety. People are I was going to mention that because I've been on SSRIs and benzos and you name it. And I've been off of everything for years. And I'm like, I told my husband before I got on the ice the other day, I was like, I want to help people with depression because 
that is the biggest thing. Just naturally, I just have low serotonin. I have gut issues, serotonin, like that's just a genetic thing for me. I have to know this about myself and I have to plan my lifestyle around it. But being in the cold, I'm like, whoa, if you have depression, get your ass in the ice. And I if mean, you have depression or anxiety, it's important to understand that you have hardwired neural pathways that have created a cycle for your brain to repeat and mm -hmm. repeat and repeat. When we're in the cold, breathing calmly through fight or flight, we are smoothing over those pathways created from trauma, and we are creating tens of thousands of new neural pathways from a place of meditative calm. We wow. are literally rewiring our brains how to remain calm, how to develop emotional regulation, how to develop mental consistency so that we are creating new pathways of practice for our thought cycles. Amazing. Amazing. I just want to keep <laughs> getting this message out to people because I get so many people that message me on Instagram with just these debilitating health conditions, and they're trying to just do a diet to help. And I think the diet can definitely help. And I don't want anyone going out and, you know, eating crap all the time. I don't think that's helpful. It's all part of it. But if you could just look at some of these other modalities like ice bathing and put that with the diet that you're doing, that's not helping you get to where you want to go. I mean, why not? What's it going to hurt? You know, and that's why I say the reason the cold works so well with these things too, is it's, it's passive. You mm -hmm. show up, you sit down you breathe. It's instant. So as soon as you get out of the ice, you're going to feel amazing. And it's a reset. So mm. if you want to fix yourself, if you want to feel better now, right now, take an ice bath. Mm. Yeah. It's, instant. it's passive. If we work out, it takes weeks to see those results. When we're eating well, it can take years to see those results. Yeah. If you want to see instant results, if you need a quick jump start to your healing journey, an ice bath's the way to go. Yep. Awesome. And let's talk a little bit about the Morosco Forge, which is on my wish list now. I'm like, I try to save some money to get this thing. But you basically invented this out of necessity because you were having such success with an ice bath. What is unique about it? What's what's so what's wonderful about it that people should know about? <laughs> the most unique thing is that it makes ice. Yes. So, yeah, so it is going to literally create ice to keep you, to keep access for you to, I, I'm going to say this all, all, all's kerplunk here. Um, <laughs> it makes its own ice. So it keeps freezing temperatures maintained year round, whether it's inside or outside, they're meant for both. We have two models. We have a personal use only model, and then we have a personal or commercial use model. So if you're in a commercial facility, we have something for you there. The personal use model is a two-year warranty. The commercial use model has a five-year warranty. They both have micron filtration with ozone disinfection. So any particulates, bacteria, virus is not going to make it past that ozone. Mm. They do not need any harsh chemicals to keep them clean. Even in a commercial facility, you're not adding chlorine, no bleach, no algicide, no descummers. Mm. Another thing that was really important when this when my business partner and my husband invented this device was that we weren't adding harsh chemicals. Mm -hmm. I had so much reactivity to chemicals to, I, I mean, everything is chemicals to, to harsh chemicals that yep. it was important that we were not adding anything to this. So you're not adding anything to it. You can put Epsom salts in it for the benefits and the magnesium, and it makes the ice a little more slushy instead of solid and firm. Mm. So if that's your jam, okay. it is set by a digital temperature controller. So you leave it plugged in standard three prong, 110 volt outlet. You don't even need a special outlet like you do oh. for your sauna and you leave it plugged in 24 seven. It will turn on and off as needed in order to maintain whatever your set temperature is. I keep mine set at 31 or 32. I keep my filtration on so that water is circulating. So I'm making ice, I'm keeping it circulated and I'm, my temperatures are hovering right around 32 degrees. Wow. 
So uh, maintenance is easy. There's a little inlet strainer on the inside of the tub that looks like a microphone. You swipe that off with your hand after each use, just like you would a dryer lint filter after a load of laundry. That's going to collect your hair, your towel, your clothing, your lint, debris, things like that. We also provide a hose that you can use as like a vacuum in case you need to vacuum. You do not have to change the water on these devices unless you experience some sort of unexpected contamination. Hmm. So okay. low maintenance, easy to use, digital temperature controller. When you call customer service, you get us. We are handcrafted right here in Phoenix, Arizona. We are a veteran owned company. We do not flat pack or ship overseas. So we're all USA brand. Um, what else? They're amazing. Awesome. I'm saving up for one. I really want one. We do also offer financing at checkout through PayPal. You can check to see if you qualify for financing. Awesome. What I mean, it sounds crazy, but you know, I already coach people. I'm already a coach and just got certified to be a quantum health coach. I'm a nutrition coach. And I'm like, what if, and I look of course on your website to see if there's any forges in Atlanta and there's none. I'm like, I would love to get one here and actually coach people in Atlanta, you know, on getting in the, getting in the ice, like, you know, investment for me, but also, you know, try to learn the forge method and actually help people do this because I'm starting to just see what it's done for me in the short amount of time that I'm doing it. And I, my brain is just going like, oh my gosh, how cool would so that I be? I developed the Morozko method because the Wim Hof method was too high energy for me. It mm. was too holotropic, hyperactive, yeah. and it elevated me before going into the ice. And this is a stage in my life where I was realizing I'd lived all these years in challenging energy in this high energy, challenging energy. I needed to move into the nurturing surrender. So for me, meeting the cold with that competition didn't work. So I developed the Morozko method using things that I had learned through dialectical behavioral therapy, hence the sensory immersion, through yoga nidra, through hypnosis. And I use a combination of these things to guide you, to teach you to guide people through an ice bath in a state of meditative calm. Mm. I host a two-day workshop to certify other guides. I do have other guides all over the country, as well as in other places of the world. I am doing in-person workshops in 2022, and I'm also Ooh. developing an online workshop for people who are still in places where they cannot attend workshops in person. So there is a guided method, the Morozko method, where you can create experiences either one-on-one -on -one, in team building, in couples experience, or just in a full sensory experience where you're including a group of people to move through this practice together. And it, it, it introduces ceremony. Mm. What is a healing modality, but also in an age that we're missing a little bit of ceremony in life. So this also introduces that ceremony. And so what I'm teaching in the Morosco method workshop is teaching people how to guide people through this practice. Mm. And I love that you said that about Wim Hof, because I've just, I don't know what it is, but I've been really repelled to do Wim Hof. I'm just like, no, I don't like it. And what I know about Pranayam from teaching yoga for all these years, it's like, I don't just something about it for me. doesn't, it, it doesn't work. And it's more of a masculine, not that there's anything wrong with the masculine, but it seems like a very masculine, um, type of a practice. And this is what I brought Kristen on Kristen Weitzel to talk about is biohacking for women and how we really should approach biohacking and all of these things differently than men. I mean, it's, you know, we've got Dave Asprey and Ben Greenfield, we've got all the men doing these things and we've got the men doing the keto and the fasting and all that. And it's like, we need something that is more feminine geared because our bodies are not the same. And we don't respond differently. I mean, we, we don't respond exactly the same as a man does because we we're just, we're different. And for men and women alike, we already experience a lot of stress in our lives. Yes. So for men and women alike to have an option or an alternative to meet the cold with calm surrender, that has a positive effect. So I work with some professional athletes. I work with some celebrities. They're all in these 
high environment, high or high stress environments, and they deal a lot with performance, performance anxiety. So if you're a professional athlete, every move you make, you're hearing thousands of people either boo you mm. or cheer you on. If you're an actor, if you're if you're an A-list celebrity, every time you go in for an audition or every time you're shooting a scene, there's all eyes are on you and it and it goes out to the masses for their yep. feedback. So this practice, meeting the cold, teaching them how to meet the cold with calm surrender has carried over into their professional lives in effective ways as well. So yeah. if, if we're taking people, you know, whether it's a CEO or, you know, someone in finance or if someone in real estate or doctors or anyone in, uh, give me your servers and bartenders, your retail workers, yeah. anyone in any high stress environment you're already taking a high stress modality like an ice bath. It is important, I think, to bridge that gap, to meet it with calm, mindful intention and teaching us more about how to harness that mindful intention in all aspects of our lives. So when mm -hmm. I'm teaching you how to move through an ice bath in the Morozko method, I'm also teaching you how to move through life with this mm -hmm. mindful intention. I love that. I think that's so important. There's a balance there and it's not just about, I think it's you that said we don't do ice ba baths to get good at ice baths. We do it to get good at life, right? I don't know. Or is that, I think that <laughs> oh, might be Chris. I did. It was great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I did say that. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, that's we're not doing this stuff to be good at it. We're doing yeah. it so that life, we're good at life. You know, yeah. we're stronger. We're I want to have resilient. a better practice. I want to have a better practice when I'm stressed out driving in traffic. I want to have a better practice yes. when I'm having challenging conversations. I want to have a better practice when it's just dealing with my day-to-day -day stress and raising a puppy. So yeah. this helps. Yeah. Meeting these things with mindful meditative intention, ex utilizing all of our sensory immersiveness, checking in with our body the way Yoga Nidra teaches us to, all of these things come into play, not only through the cold, but in other aspects of our lives. Yep. I agree hundred percent. Well, this has been absolutely amazing. I'm so excited to share this with everyone. Where can people find you and more about your work and your guided meditations? What's the best way? So best way to find me is on Instagram at Adrian underscore Jezik or at Morotsko Forge. You can also reach out on our website, www.morotskoforge.com, or you can email info at morotskoforge.com. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure I link all that in the show notes too. Oh, go ahead. And I don't have the dates for the workshops in 2022 just yet, but keep an eye out on the DC guide page on the website and keep an eye out on Instagram. I will be releasing some soon. Awesome. And you may see me there. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Adrian. This has been amazing. I appreciate you coming on and talking with me today. Thank you for having me. You are helping me achieve all of my wildest dreams. Thank Yay. you.